everyone, welcome back to the channel, Paul at ISM. Welcome to part three of our Tamiya Porsche 124th 911 GT2 video build. Okay, so we're back for the third part of the Tamiya 911 GT2 build. Um, today, we're going to work on the running gear, the chassis, suspension, brakes, uh, the interior. We're going to do the seats, seat belts, etc. Get the roll cage in and get it all ready for the final stage, part four, which we're going to all polished together. Windows in, job done finished it's been a good build so far it's a nice kit even though it's a little bit older um but it's going together well and we've nearly finished it and then once this one's done we can move on to my 68 chevelle as part of my christmas birthday buddy build there's details for that on another video on ism so you can go and have a look if you've got any questions post down below in the description and i'll explain everything there there we are but without further ado let's uh let's get back into this build Hey everyone, please subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, get notified of our latest videos, give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and leave a comment. I do read and appreciate every comment you guys and girls leave behind. I may not reply to them all, but they are all appreciated. And there's a link in the description of the video that takes you to a big long list of all handy videos and a lot of the products I use in my videos. You know. And so we're back on the Tamiya 124 scale Porsche GC2. Lots of parts to clean up. Today we're going to deal with the running gear, so brake, suspension, exhaust, engine parts, etc. And the interior as well. So cutting all the parts off of our Tamiya sprue cutters. Um, we've got an extra seat in this because of the extra sprue of parts. There's some different parts for the kit. And clean up is with a combination of my scalpel, UMP thinny sticks, UMP sponges, and of course the UMP buffer to get everything back to a nice clean plastic look so it's a laborious task but i always show a little bit of it in every video uh our thinny sticks are fantastic for this job they do the job really well the 400 being my weapon of choice and the 240 thinny sponge and larger sponge at the same time are great for getting seams off the likes of the edge of seats like this which always have a seam around the outer edge um and of course the buffer the buffer is invaluable for getting that nice high shine back to the plastic. So a little bit of care and attention, nice cleanup. The more thorough job you do now, like say using the scalpel to get rid of the seam lines off the drive shafts as well. Um, the more thorough job you do now, the better it'll look as a finished piece. Uh, a couple of parts to glue together on the exhaust is the actual silencer pipe. So a little bit of Tamiya white glue on there, squeeze it together. And then we'll go around the exterior with some Tamiya Extra Thin. This is my Extra Thin Plasti Weld Mix. And get it all glued together. Give it a good squeeze and leave it overnight to fully dry. Don't try and rush this stage. If you start sanding it before the glue is fully dry, uh, you'll be chasing seams. If you do this properly, squeeze it together, you'll get rid of most of the seam quite easily. Suspension struts. So the struts and springs are all as one. There's always an ejector pin mark in amongst the springs, so the easiest way to deal with this, I find, is use a nice sharp knife. I've got a number 11 blade in my scalpel, and just chop the edge right next to the edge of the spring, do it on both sides, and then you can get in there with a file and clean it up. It's the easiest way to do it. Um, there's lots of people out there with literally refabricating new springs and shocks and what have you, but the kit parts are good enough for me. I'm happy with how they look and for how much you can actually see them on the kit. Well, it's up to you whether the time is well spent there. Like I said, I've zoomed in a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. But it's just a case of just scribing across carefully. Cutting it down and then getting the blade underneath and cleaning up any excess parts. So a little bit of care, especially using a knife as well. Um, on the seats themselves, they've got the harness holes at the top, but nothing at the side. So I'm going to add them in myself. I did actually miss drill the first one, which is a bit of a pain. So we had to fill that in later on. But I'm just going to put a 2mm hole 
in the side in a couple of spots and then we're going to cut across widen the hole and use our Shujibido files to flatten out a hopefully nice oval shape <clears throat> which our belts can go through excuse my voice in a minute I'm still getting over COVID my chest is still bad my voice is still absolutely wrecked this video has been here ready for a voiceover for nearly a week now and I just haven't had the strength in my voice to do it so it might get croaker and croaker as I go. I'll do my best. If there's any coughing, I do apologise. But like I say, once we've cleared out all the material, <clears throat> we get one of the uh, Sujibido files. The oval one is my weapon of choice. And uh, we just lightly file away until we get the shape we require. So you don't have to do this. You don't want to drill the holes, uh, make a hole in it. You could just put the harness up to the edge to give it the look that it is going through there. And there we go, there's all the parts cleaned up. We cleaned up our glue parts on the exhaust. All the white parts are the extra parts that come with the kit. So there's a seat mount, extra seat, center console, etc, etc. And we're in the spray booth. So we've got my Water HPC Plus, some Tamiya Grey Fine Surface Primer. Uh, this has been thinned about 20% with Tamiya Lacquer Thinner with Retarder. We're at about 16 PSI. I've spilled paint everywhere, as you can see. It looks like a murder scene in here. Uh, we're going to prime up the seats because these are going to be painted in textured black paint. But first of all, we're going to paint the back of the seat red to go with the rest of the interior. So I'm going to prime in grey to begin with, just the back of the seat. And then we're going to paint it in the same paint we used, which is the MAD Touch, MAD touch of paint we used on the body. Uh, for the rest of it, we've got Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black. And just give everything a couple of light coats of primer. Like I say, it's a 0.3 mil Iwater HPC Plus. We're at about 16 to 18 psi. A couple of light coats down. Leave it for an hour or so to dry, and you're good to go to paint over. It's why I love so much about lacquers. The speed of painting really suits my building style. Obviously, I am filming, so kind of time is money. Um, but just take your time. Don't try and hose on that first coat. Uh, just be thorough, getting all your angles and corners and recesses and what have you. And then when you come back for your second coat, you'll get the coverage you require. But it's quite a forgiving primer, the Mr. Surfacer 1500. And whether you use Mr. Surfacer, AK, Vallejo, Tamiya, UMP, they all work. Um, UMP, Tamiya and Mr. Surfacer are my choice of primers. So they've proved very reliable over the years. Interior parts, we've got lots of red on this car, and I mean <coughs> lots of red. So the door card outers are being left red, the inners are going to go black. We've got to paint up this engine, so it's all been masked off as well, as has the intercooler for the back. Is it an intercooler radiator on this? I'm not sure. Answer on a postcard in the chat down below, please. I'm going to assume it's an intercooler. I would think it was. Um, but anyway... Um, so this is getting primed, it's all been masked up with Tamiya tape, and it's being primed again with Mr. Service of 1500, and we're going to get some metallic paint on these uh, later on. So a couple of coats of that on each one, getting all the angles. Obviously on this body, we want to keep the red red, so make sure you don't get any overspray. Uh, mask off where you think you need to go to. If you're not very accurate with your airbrush, mask off the entire thing. But again, don't try and hose it all in one go. Get a couple of coats down and you'll be good to go. Tammy LP5 semi gloss black now uh, for the rest of the interior. So, uh, a lot of the components of the interior are going to get LP5. Semi gloss black is a very popular color for car interiors, and rightly so. So, the dashboard gets a couple of coats steering wheel, steering column. Uh, basically, if it's black on the interior, it's more than likely going to go semi gloss black. But the LP paints are very, very forgiving, really, really nice paints to spray, and definitely my favourite, or certainly one of my favourite paints. And again, the door card we carefully masked off earlier, we're going to paint in semi-gloss black, so we'll have a nice black door card, and the outer surrounding edges will be red. Um, Subframe, we're going to paint in silver, so the primer is now dry. I believe this is LP38 flat aluminium. I thought... A bit of a flatter colour today on some of the metallic parts, and we'll put some shinier metal parts next to it. So it's a lovely colour, this, but it certainly lives up to its name. It is a very, very flat aluminium colour. It's lovely. Uh, we've then got some Mr. Hobby Super Metallic Super Iron, another one of my favourite paints. 
We're using the OEMP Apex now. This is my metallic spray uh, brush now. This is what I use. It's a 0.2 mil needle. It will be about 16 PSI. And all these super metallics. This is super fine silver, I believe. Uh, they've all been thinned with the rapid thinner from Mr. Hobby. About 50%, 60%. And again, we're not hosing it on. We're just putting a nice slight coat down. Uh, let that dry. And then we come back and get full coverage later on. But the super fine silver, this colour is a lovely colour. This is actually the older super fine silver. The Mark 1 paint. I've still got a bit left in a bottle. So I thought I'll use it. And after an hour or so, <coughs> being a lacquer... It's all dry and we can unmask it. Be careful of masking. What takes hours to mask takes seconds to take off. That is the beautiful thing about masking. Uh, and we can detail paint this and add a bit of a wash later on, should we wish. Always a pain when the engine's molded into the chassis, but at least half the engine's there as such. And like I say, a bit of careful of masking. And there we go. There's our base engine all painted. Nice and dry as well. And our intercooler, I'm going to consider it being an intercooler because I think it is. It's got two big hoses at the side, so it must be uh, nicely masked off, as are our door cards as well. Very, very nice. They're looking good. Tons of waste masking tape. And then the seat. So we painted the seat backs red, the same colour guards red as the car. What we're going to do, we're going to use some Tamiya uh, 1, 2 and or 3 mil, depending on what we need, to carefully mask the seat back. So I'm literally following the profile of the seat with the tape. Uh, using tweezers where needed to push it in. It's a tedious job, but we're going to paint this in texture black. So we'll have a nice red seat back with a bit of a glossy look to it and a nice matte textured finish on the front. So... They should look good in the car. Like I say, a lot of red in this car. It really is a sea of red, but it's how the real cars were. There's no full carpet in there. Some of them don't even have carpet at all. But we're going to add a half carpet because it's what I've seen in a lot of the cars. So uh, we're going to use some sticky back uh, felt material for that later on. Like I say, some careful masking with the one mil. We can come with the two and the three now to infill the larger areas. Then use 6, 10, and 18 mil Tamiya to infill the rest. So, like I say, tedious, boring job, but it'll look good when it's done, trust me. Uh, this is all a part of the modeling journey, so it's just something that has to be done. Um, and yes, you could brush paint it. Would it look as good? No. Would it be quicker? Probably. Um, for me, when I'm live streaming jobs like this, I've done really quick while I'm chatting away reading chat, you know, talking to people, talking to people in the hangouts. So, you know, I've got all the time in the world for this hobby. So it makes no difference if I spend two hours masking or five minutes brush painting because it's the same thing to me. Uh, but I think you infinitely get a better job masking and airbrushing than brush painting, for sure. So we've got some Tamiya textured black paint now. Big fan of this stuff. So what I tend to do, we're through the 0.2 mil Apex again is for the first couple of coats, I'm quite close, and I'm just getting the coverage build up. And then for the last few coats, I come 12 to 18 inches away from the model, from the piece, and spray a big misting pattern at it. Now what that does is it dries the paint on its way, and it powders as any real paint would. And I find doing that way, I get a much nicer texture finish. Uh, you can see now I've got a little bit of distance, not the full distance yet. And you'll just see it building up slowly. You do waste a lot of paint. You can see it all going on the filter behind. But it does give a nice textured look. And there we go. Both seats are done. Can't really see the texture. The lighting in the spray booth is immense. Uh, it's very bright. And it does kind of play tricks with the camera. But you'll see them later on regardless. Suspension was all painted in, I think this was Mr. Hobby Stainless. Uh, we're going to mask up and leave some of that in the stainless color and paint the springs a different color so again using the thinner tamiya tapes infilled with some larger tamiya tapes we're going to mask up all the suspension struts until we're happy that they're done again <clears throat> really tedious job but well worth it i think these look good when they're done it's just a case of it's going to have to be done so it's up to you again you could brush paint it i've 
just bought a load of Tamiya enamels, so I'm much more confident brush painting enamels. Now I can get a nice glossy finish with those than acrylic. So maybe in the future we'll just brush paint, but for now we're masking. Now a little tip trick for your brake discs is we painted those in Super Iron. We need to paint the center hubs now. So I've got my display circle cutter. It takes a bit of trial and error to get the right size of hole, but we just cut it out. We look at how it goes and then we just put a little cut right on the very edge of one of the edge of the circles. <clears throat> so it just takes the final edge away. And then if you fit it round, it should slot straight in to where the caliper is. So you get your tweezers. Have a chat with your chat on the live stream. And just gently burnish it down and push it in. You can take it back off should you wish, like I'm about to, and reposition it. So you need to get the circle size the right size for the hub. And then if you cut the edge perfect like I have, it will fit perfectly around the caliper and the hub. And that way we can airbrush the hub without disturbing anything else. And then a little bit of tape over the top of the caliper. Not as important because we're going to paint this a different color later on. And there we go. We can now paint the center hub on the wheel prop, uh, sorry, the disc properly without ruining our hard work. They're mounted on a bit of sticky tape on a tongue depressor. Everything else is there for a bit of paint. So we've got the suspension strut and the exhausts, which we're going to use some alkalad burnt iron to add a little bit of heat stain into this. Nothing technicolor or spectacular. I'm just going to darken up around, which I'm assuming they're supposed to be turbos. They look like it. Um, they're not very good, to be honest, but I'm going to add a bit of heat staining around there. Uh, just generally around all the bits just add a little bit of interest to it so it's a very very thin opaque paint it just needs building up slowly use the 0.2 mil apex again for this and uh, just going careful not adding too much i don't want to make it all that color i just want to add a staining effect to some areas like so there we go it looks really good happy with that and then for the center of the disc we've got the same paint burnt iron and looking at real life references of the hubs, they are a very similar color. So I'm just going to put a couple of light coats down over the silver. Again, I don't want to go super dark. I just want to get that light burnt iron color. And there we go. Put that down to dry for five minutes. Come back, put another coat on, and we'll be good to go. Like I say, the trick with the circle cutter works really well. Very quick way of masking hubs. You could brush paint these if you want. They're not really going to be majorly seen. But obviously I'm making a video build here. So I try and do as good a job as I can on the painting. And then for the rest of the part, we're going to brush paint. So we've got some Vallejo model color black. It's been thinned with a drop or two of water. We've got a nice Series 7 brush. I think you could say a 0 or a 1. And we're going to spend a little bit of brush painting. So we're just brush painting all the uh, CV gaiters. On the drive shafts, and we'll paint the drive shafts a different color as well. Just going round, bit of careful painting. It's nice to brush paint from time to time. Kind of takes you back a little bit to being a, a youth and not really caring about your models as much. But as long as you're nice and careful and neat, and using water based paints over lacquer, you can get them back off should you wish. For the pedals, the brake clutch and accelerator, I've got my Molotow Chrome pen, and I'm just gonna paint this over there's many ways you could do this you could mask and spray it you could hand paint it in a silver paint but for me just grab the molotow pen we don't really need to handle this so there's no issue there uh, a little tip of the molotow pens whenever you use them make sure you pull through the paint again the paint goes a lot less metallic over time on the nib so it's well worth pulling it through to uh, make sure you get that nice chrome effect and just do remember that <clears throat> You can't handle it at all uh, once it's been on. If you clear it with the likes of Aqua Gloss, you can. Use a little bit of the sheen. But if you're just using the pen, if you handle it, you will take the finish off. I am experimenting with the AK Chrome, which is a very similar product. Um, and the results are good so far. They're not too bad. It does seem a little bit more resilient um, than the Molotow. And it's certainly cheaper to buy. So I'll report on that later. So we masked up the center hubs, 
and that way we can spray our calipers. We've got some Mr. Hobby GX Yellow. I forget the number now, but it's around the GX range. We're giving a good whiz up with our Badger Paint Mixer, <coughs> very precariously one-handed. And we've got some Mr. Hobby Leveling Thinner there as well. This paint is super thick, so it does take a good bit of mixing. Might look a bit overkill, but trust me, it takes a little bit of uh, work. Then using the Badger Paint Mixer as a guide, we can pour a bit of paint into the pot. And then by eye, we'll mix about 50% thinner. Again, give it a whiz up with the Badger Paint Mixer. And then through our HPC Plus, we're going to put a couple of light coats down and then put a heavier coat down at the end. Again, don't go mad trying to hose it on. It will just separate on you. This is probably third coat in now. I'm just starting to get some coverage. Uh, I've opted for yellow springs on the suspension and yellow calipers. I think it looked good against the red. And like I say, don't go mad. Just light coats building it up. And on your last coat, get a nice wet coat to get a nice gloss finish. So, really good paint, very heavily pigmented, and they spray absolutely beautiful once they're thinned uh, with the Wasabi Level and Thinner. Very, very nice. And like I say, I think the yellow is going to go well against the rest of the red on the car, especially the calipers, which we'll see through those beautiful speed lines. Like I say, with anything opaque like white, yellow, red, light greens, light blues, don't hose it on. It'll just separate, congeal. It'll look horrendous. Nice light coats are the key. Vallejo model air silver now. We're going to paint the very tops of the suspension. Again, you're not really going to see this, but I've paid attention to everything else. We might as well do a good job as we can. So again, just some gentle brushing. Uh, like I say, I've acquired a load of the Tamiya enamels lately, so they're probably going to replace some of the acrylics. Um, I am a big fan of this Model Air Silver though. It is a very nice paint. And uh, obviously you've got the beautiful uh, effect of putting acrylic over lacquers. You can get the acrylic back off. And I had some brake caliper markings uh, spare. I think the hobby design, I forget where they're from now. So we're gonna put some nice Brembo uh, caliper decals on. Again, it'll contrast well against the yellow. So we're going to pop that off and get it in place. Oh, there's me. Hello. Get a bit of water. And somebody commented a while back, bro, why are you afraid of wasting water? Get a part. I was like, I'm taking four decals off. I don't need a part. I'm just prop the bench, chuck the decals in, mop up with the kitchen paper. Job done. So once we've got it off, get them in place, get any moisture out from behind them. Hit them with some UMP Strong. I'm going straight to Strong on this. I know what it needs. Uh, and again, we've got a nice contrasting red on yellow. Now, if we do take the decal solutions out of their stand, put them out of the way because they're very easy to knock over, aren't they, Mr. Windmill? If Paul's watching, he knocked a bottle of his extra strong over the other day. No idea why I'm doing this off camera at all. Uh, but for some reason, I did the first one. <laughs> but yeah, just wipe it over, leave it on, and then um, if it needs a extra strong over the top, you can always add that later on. There we go, that's those. We can leave those to dry now. And then for the seats, I had some spare Recaros, right? I have no idea if these be Recaros in the car at all, but mine are getting Recaro decals. So it's as simple as that. So again, a couple of seconds in the water. Get them all in place and hit them with the strong decal solution again. These tweezers are the Sizo anti static tweezers we sell at UMP. Had them for ages, not really used them. Absolutely love them. Really do love them. They're very precise, very, very well made. They're not a cheap set of tweezers at all. But I must have had them for a couple of years and never used them. And then I just found them the other day and thought, oh, let's give them a go. And I absolutely love them now. They're very, very precise, great for decals or PE, and uh, yeah, they work well. We can start assembling some parts now. So we've got a subframe with the rear differential in. Well, it's, it's the only differential on the car. And then we've got some suspension arms to glue in place. So we've got the Bob Smith Gold with one of the precision nibs on. And we're just going to start assembling all parts. It needs to be like an octopus here with about 400 hands to hold all these parts as you glue them. It's a bit fiddly on the back of this thing. 
but typical Tamiya all fits the work together really well. And I'm liking the shiny, super fine silver contrasting against the metallic uh, flat uh, LP aluminium stainless. Uh, a flat aluminium, sorry, from Tamiya. Couple of dabs of glue, uh, the yabba dabba do in place, and we get that subframe assembly in. Like I said, we're going to add a nice wash on this later on, so it'll add a bit of depth to it all. Again, just make sure everything is located properly where it should be. And then a little bit more of the Bob Smiths. I'm using the Bob Smiths more and more on parts like this because you get a little bit more time to work with stuff and it's not as brutal in taking the paint off. So if you put a part on wrong, you can get it back apart and it doesn't tend to take the paint off as quickly as some of the other sea glues. So it's a little bit more forgiving. Now these rear hubs are not the best fit. I did have a bit of an issue with one of these. It was sticking out a little bit too far, so I had to kind of unglue it and glue it again. But it fits it at the bottom and kind of just slots over the top. There's no real positive fitment there. So that could definitely be better. We put the poly caps in the hub as well. There we go. There's our rear suspension. Sorry, there's the poly caps going in. They've not gone in just yet, but they have now. Like I say, this was over a week ago, so I'm a little bit rusty on what I did. Uh, brake disc and calipers, they've been checked for which one fits where and the correct angle. And they're in place. The yellow looks great contrasted against the red. A little bit of uh, white tack in there from the spraying process. Like I say, the Bob Smiths, it's not an instant bond. Because it's a foam safe odorless glue. It takes a little bit longer to cure than normal super glue. So if you do put a part on wrong, you can quite often get it back off with minimal damage. And it doesn't take the paint off as quick either. Front suspension with the hub as well. We've got our poly cap in there. That yellow looks great. Really happy with that. A couple of dabs of glue around the edge and we can get the discs on. So again, make sure you get the right angle because they will all fit where they shouldn't. Um, so it's up to you to make sure you get the correct one in the right place. There are little locating lugs on the back of them, but like I say, you'll often find that they will fit on wrong, which is a bit silly, really. And then our steering rack <clears throat> clips over the top. You can't see it, but again, the rubber gaiters have been painted in Vallejo silver, uh, black as well. There's a little bit of contrast, doesn't really show very well. But how much of a nice contrast is that yellow suspension and brakes? That's exactly why I did them in that colour. Just adds a nice bit of differentiation underneath. Differentiation? Is that even a word? It is now. It's like finagle. Differentiation. Sounds like something Alan would say. There we go. A couple of dabs of glue. We can get the front subframe in place. Refer to instructions all the time. Make sure you go from the right way around. I thought this went the other way. And again, nice positive fit. That matte aluminium looks great. And then we got our hubs in place. Make sure it's located properly and give her all a good push down positively. Now we've got the rear bulkhead with the intercooler. So a couple of dabs of glue to hold that in. And then that literally slots over those two parts on the back of the engine. And now we can add a wash. So we've got some Tamiya black panel line wash here. Adding some of it to a paint pot, and I'm going to add some Santador Mineral Spirits because this is an enamel wash. Uh, we're going to thin it quite heavily. Uh, we've got a larger brush than is on the bottle. Uh, we're going to plaster this everywhere. There's a lot to cover, so I thought it's just easier to use a bigger brush. Thin it down a bit so we get some nice capillary reaction on the metalwork. And just go around and give everything a wash. So quite a fun little moment, this. I always enjoy putting a wash on things. It certainly brings things alive, especially things like these brake calipers. They have the cross-drilled effect in them, so if you get the wash in there everywhere, wipe it off, it gives a nice look. Now, calipers, always a bit of a strange one on this, should I wash them. Now, I did wash them. I sped this footage up as well, and I kind of regretted doing it, so I spent a bit more time getting it all off. But we put it all on the springs, over all the suspension components everywhere because we'll come back later on with some cotton buds and some tissue and we'll remove all the excess wash and it should leave a nice 
kind of semi-weathered look behind. It had a lot of depth, especially to that engine. It gets rid of that mono colour look of it all. And it does just add depth. It brings alive all the surface detail and the recesses and what have you. And like I say, thinning it a little bit with the Sansa door just makes the capillary action work a lot better. And yeah, it just covers really well. So always add a wash. If it will hold a wash, give it a wash. That's how I do it. The only place I tend to refrain from doing it is the chassis itself because it's just a nightmare to get out sometimes. And I think it could look a bit stark against the red. On metallics, though, always give it a wash. Always. It looks so much better. So it's dry for a good 40 minutes. We've got some cotton buds with some Sansador on. And we're going around and just carefully removing any excess wash. So again, where we put a wash where it can be held. Now, if it can be removed, remove it. And it will leave it in the panel lines and in the gaps. And like on these brake discs in the drill days. And you can see the depth it's given that brake disc now. It just adds a nice bit of depth to it, makes it look a little bit less, you know, sterile, looks more interesting. And uh, yeah, if it can hold a wash, trust me, give it a wash. It's well worth doing. We've got this black under tray now, so we put a little dab of glue at the front on the left and a couple of dabs at the back, and we just glue that in place. And now for the interior. So I've got this black felt film I got off Amazon. And we're going to cut a few pieces of this to make like a, a carpet for the front so i was going to use that checkered plate you can see it there it's a couple of rally stands um but cutting it pro just proved a nightmare you just couldn't get the shape correct so i'm doing this by eye that was a good guess that wasn't a bad fit so i'm just looking where it needs cutting cutting a bit off checking test fit cutting a bit more off uh, until i'm happy that it fits in place like that and then we just cut it to size, peel the self-adhesive back off. And then push it down in place. Uh, I took out the accelerator pedals and what have you just to get the, uh, the fabric in there properly. A little dab of glue to put it back in. Like so, and then repeat that for the other side and we can start assembling some of the interior now. So we've got a centre console for the front and the back. I haven't noticed the front one yet. I thought the front one was a racing path, but it's not. It's actually part of it. So it's not actually been painted yet, but it will be in a little bit when it's needed. Gear sticks in. We've painted the knob in Vallejo black as well to have a little bit of a differentiation in the zone. Uh, the zone in the colour. Differentiation again. Steering wheel's been done. We've got the uh, Porsche logo to go on. So we're going to pop it on the steering column first. Glue it in place. And we can attach that to the dashboard as well. Uh, before we do that, though, we've got some dials to add to the dash. Those stereotypical Porsche dials. And there we go. Just go through and add them all one at a time. Make sure you get them orientated the right way. Get them in place, then get a cotton board, remove all the excess moisture, hit them with some UMP Strong, leave them be. And you're good to go. You can always drop a little couple of drops of some clear in there, like Aqua Gloss or even Johnson's Clear, Johnson's Pledge, wherever you want to put in there. And it'll just give that look of glass uh, if you catch any light in there. So for Tammy decals, and they're all Tammy decals, not too bad. They're a little bit thick, a lot of carrier film around the edge. But overall pretty good. So there's all the dials in place. We've got a steam wheel one on the um, sheet still. Like I say, got a cotton bud, just gently push them all home. And then UMP Strong. And then the steering wheel one, we just get it positioned in place. Remove any moisture. And put it to one side after hitting it with the decal solution. Edding paint pen in silver. We're going to just add some details to the switch gear and dials inside. Uh, good little paint markers these. It is actually a paint marker and not a marker pen. So it does put real paint down. They take a while to dry, so don't be too eager to handle it. But on adding small detail like this, it actually looks pretty good. Doesn't look bad at all. Little dab of glue for the steering column. And we can get that glued in place. So 
Not a massively detailed interior. It's a very sparse, race-inspired interior. But it looks okay. Seat belts. Now, I have a full uh, how-to video due to come on this. It is sadly going to be for patrons only. So if you want to see the video, first one will be PE window wipers. It'll be a very uh, in-depth video on building those. And uh, I'm going to do a full video on building the seat belts as well. So if you'd like to see that, there's detail, details on my patron down below. I think it needs to be tier three or higher to see the how to's. And that'll allow you to see the uh, exclusive video builds as well, which will be a Alpha Models 964 Porsche. And you'll also get two week access on all the videos as well. So if you want to take uh, advantage of that, there's links in the description down below. But basically, I use a Studio 27 uh, seatbelt set some 3 mil ribbon off eBay and just build them up. Like I say, I'm going to do a full in-depth how-to video on these, uh, but it will be available only to patrons. Yes, I know. I have discussed this in my latest video in the uh, RWB Porsche review. So if you have not watched that, I would go and watch it to see my thoughts on it. It is what it is. It's just one of those things. But anyway, with the seatbelt built up, we've got some Sparco uh, harness pad decals again i don't know if they be sparco or not but for for my build they are and uh, once they're in place and all the moisture's gone i get some mr hobby level and thinner on a micro brush and just lightly touch it and it melts the decal into the fabric and makes it look like it's part of the fabric don't go too crazy though because it will absolutely destroy the decal if you put it on too heavy but yeah now we're applying some glue to the uh seat mountain points you see our carpet's in there as well. We put a couple of strips up the side to take it to that centre console as well. And our seats now will cover the edge of where they go. And that's about how it is in the real car, really. And then CA glued in place. We've got all the tails of the belt out the back. And then we can get our roll cage in. We can feed that through the back of the roll cage. We can then glue the roll cage in place. So this part is hidden, so we're just going to put some dabs of CA glue inside, hit it with some kicker, and that is glued in place, ready to go. And then for the seat belts themselves, we just pull them out the back where we want them to go. They're going to go here. Uh, now, I couldn't find any PE that would simulate the mountain bracket, so on these, I'm simulating them going through the back of that and onto a strut brace on the rear uh, turret. <laughs> it's the only way I could do it, and that's where I'm going to blag. And if you believe that, well, that's up to you. But they've been cut and glued, well, double sided tape to the back, as you can see. Like I say, it's a sea of red, this thing. I did contemplate yellow belts. I did, and I kind of regret not doing it now. Uh, but I think the red suits the red interior. Like I say, it's a sea of red in this thing. Um, it's just how they are. But the, the dashboard's in place now as well. There we go. The belts look really good in there in red. They might look really good in yellow, actually, thinking about it. But it is what it is. And a quick test fit of my... I love these wheels. These beautiful Speedline rims. They are huge. Huge, huge wheels. Absolutely massive. So just a quick test fit to see how everything looks. Make sure everything fits still. It's the first time I've had them on the hubs. <clears throat> So, obviously, we've got Molotov on the outer edge, so we're being very careful not to touch that. And we're not going crazy being too aggressive putting them in place. Fit is perfect. I cannot fault Caesar's work. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, but they are big tyres on the back of this thing. And then a quick fit to the body. Now, this is earlier footage because with the interior in, I forgot to film me putting the body on. So, I'm just showing how the body fits on. Clips onto two locating points at the back. That part we don't need right now. We'll glue that back in place in a bit. Forever coming off that rear piece. I don't know why. Just won't glue in place. And then the front pieces, they just push through with some gentle persuasion. And there's two locating points at the front as well. And there we go. That's it in place with no interior. Those wheels look epic. I absolutely love those wheels. They are two-tone. The center is a darker magnesium color. And here we go with the interior in now. And we're just putting the front splitter on, rear spoiler on. And yeah, she's looking good. Very happy with the look of this. So we're not far off being finished now. We've got to flat and polish all the body. We've got all the glass work and the lights to do. 
Um, but not far off being finished now at all. But I'm really happy how this is going. It's a lovely kit of a lovely car. Um, and those wheels just look fantastic. They are absolutely beautiful. Glad I did the guards red as well. It looks really, really good. So there we go. There's part three done. So there we go. That's where we're at with that today. Um, I think it's looking good. Those wheels just look epic. The hugely bright lights I have over my bench uh, are really kind of saturating the silver. The, the center of the hub is like a magnesium color and the outer is a chrome. I'm hoping my still pictures will catch it better um, at the end, but it's looking really good. This, its stance is perfect. Um, it's certainly a red car. I give it that. It really is a lot of red in there. Um, looking back, I kind of regret not doing those belts in yellow. I think they will look good in yellow, but I think for the exterior, it'll all tie in together better through the side windows. But yeah, I think it would look good in yellow. But anyway, let me know your thoughts on that. Should I have done yellow belts? Would it look better? But it is what it is, and they are now red. So yeah, great kit though. Like I say. Uh, enjoyed it so far, but looking forward to getting the number spawn off the bench and getting on with that Chevelle because I'm really eager to start that buddy build. Like I said, there's details all over ISM. My personal modeling page, there's a video about it, the lot. If you've got any questions you want to join in, it's either of the two Revel boxes of the 68 Chevelle. So it's either the black car in the Revel Germany box or the red car on the Revel USA box. Has to be a 68. I am very strict on that one. Has to be a brand new kit, but it's a wonderful kit. I did a video build on a while back, and it's going to be hopefully a good birthday slash Christmas buddy build. Starts 14th of November, which is my birthday, and runs through to New Year. So if you want to take part in it, let me know, and I can sort you out details uh, about the build. But yeah, that's coming to fruition now. This build is nearly done. Um, one more part, and it'll be off the bench as well. So there we go. As always, you want to support the channel, keep these videos going, keep the live streams going. Uh, there's a Patreon me link down below. You get two week early access on all the videos. You get exclusive how to videos like I talked about today. There's going to be one on PE window wipers, one on building seat belts. Uh, you're going to get an exclusive video build every now and well, all the time. There'll be an exclusive Patreon one on there as well. I'll pick one of the builds each time to become a Patreon exclusive. Uh, I know I've always said I never would, but things change. There's 10 to 15 free videos going out every month on ISM, as well as 30 live streams, all for free. So one build every couple of months is going to be a patron-only build, and hopefully you can understand and respect my reasons for doing that. If you want to become a patron and take advantage of all those offers, there's links down below. Uh, you can also get added to a patron-only group chat on Facebook and a patron-only supporter group as well, where you can talk to me direct. Have a laugh, have a joke, show me your work and what have you. And it also keeps all these videos going. This is my job. This is important to me. And uh, without your support, I can't do this. So hopefully everyone understands why I'm doing things like this. Links to everything in the description down below. ISM Facebook page, forum, UMP Retail, the Lab the Bench page, off our Hangout group. the uh, My own Paul ISM modeling page is there. My scale mates, my email address to get in touch with me is all there. And as always, make sure you sub to the channel, click the bell notifications to get notified of all the latest videos, give the video a thumbs up, and please leave me a comment down below. Love reading all your feedback, and let me know, should I have done those belts yellow, or did I make the right decision and do them red? There we go. Enjoy the rest of the night, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.